What's up YouTube? Hyperius here again. So I've been working on the bike for most of the week and uh, thankfully I was able to finish most of the battery cage um, as well as I received a couple components I had ordered uh, over the past month or so. Number one being I got a Kelly KLS H series uh, 400 amp uh, variable voltage controller so I can program this thing to run at any voltage between 24 up to 72 volts which I'm going to be running at uh, 52 nominal so that's perfect for what I need. Um, additionally it has Bluetooth out so I can actually uh, I'm probably going to 3D print a little phone case to use one of my old uh, phones I think it's an old Galaxy Note 2. I'm going to use that as kind of like a battery management and uh, controller management setup on the bike itself. Uh, kind of 3D print a case for it and then slap it directly onto the bike but uh, the biggest thing or the biggest reason I got this was because I can do uh, variable voltage uh, cutoff which is nice because there's not many controllers out there that are high power and made for a 14S setup so you have to choose either low power and 14S or high power and variable voltage which thankfully this thing is um, it, it was pretty pricey but even still, uh, I'm still well under $2,000 for this total build. Um, meanwhile, in the battery cage area, uh, I've been able to mount all seven modules of my Nissan LEAF batteries. Uh, these batteries are two uh, in parallel, uh, two in series. So there's two parallel, and then those two parallel go into series to make you give you a 2S at uh, 64 amp hours. These ones uh, were pulled out of a total leaf that had some mileage on it so when I talked to the EV uh, recycling place they were like well we can guarantee these up to 58 amp hours. I'm going to be uh, running them down to 55 amp hours just so I can save them and uh, keep them alive for a lot longer than uh, rated specs but either way uh, what I was able to do is build a battery cage and you can see it's a little bit bigger than the stock battery cage but not by much maybe like eh, two or three centimeters there but uh, the way I did that is um, I used some angle bracket aluminum angle bracket I picked up from uh, Lowe's hardware and uh, just cut it up with my angle grinder and uh, that gave me a little bit of area to move out of the frame a bit you can see it does kind of ride on the outside of the seat, but I don't really feel that's going to be a too much of a problem while I'm riding. And if it does, I'll probably just put a little bit of foam in here and just extend the seat over the top of the battery. I do plan on running a uh, like a corrugated sheet, uh, corrugated plastic sheet on the outside of this to kind of give myself a little bit of insulation and a little bit of weatherproofing. Uh, I never plan on riding this bike in the rain or in the wet, but even still, it's nice to uh, have some kind of weatherproofing on board. Uh, underside, I've got threaded rod running up through the aluminum. I was able to uh, get put on to for the uh, or put on here for the new battery cage. This aluminum bracketing, uh, I used uh, DP420, which is a 3M epoxy. It's got a shear strength of like 6,000 psi, which is for the amount of uh, amount of space I'd be uh, epoxying to this thing is almost as much as welding it. Um, I talked to a zero engineer and he was kind enough to supply with me some uh, technical drawings on uh, stress areas of the frame. This section of the frame right here is one of the biggest stress areas of the frame. Uh, and if you do anything to this metal bar right here, whether it be uh, heat damage or uh, uh, incorrect aluminum welding because all this frame is aluminum and aluminum is a pain in the ass to weld correctly so if you say punch through with your uh, MIG or stick welder or something like that uh, you can seriously damage the frame and, and make it basically a total write-off because this section of the frame is engineered to be extremely strong and hold almost the entire weight of the frame uh, regardless because I knew that and because I knew that 3M epoxy uh, the DP420 stuff had such a high shear strength uh, it's like 6,000 PSI. I was like, well, what's the point of welding it when I can get essentially the same amount of uh, str strength out of just buffing down the inside of the we or inside of the bar here and the bottom side of the uh, bracket and then just epoxying it. So I epoxied that and on the inside here you can see there's a bracket going across the battery box that's kind of keeping the uh, batteries from when I slam on the brakes shifting forward and that bracket is epoxied in as well. 
but because the top batteries don't have any uh, bracket holding them from shifting forward I actually ran threaded rods you can see here threaded rods down through the batteries and through that uh, angled bracket that's holding the front two batteries and then those threaded rods connect up uh, underneath and what I plan on doing is putting in the onboard charger using those threaded rods as well so I can actually kill two birds with one stone uh, secure the batteries and the onboard charger that way uh, let's see so in this section in this kind of general area here I plan on putting the uh, contactor which is a 400 amp contactor uh, as well as a couple of the high voltage components like the uh, the shunt and uh, shunt monitoring system and that kind of thing um, and then directly underneath in this tiny area here directly underneath the controller I'm gonna have my 12 volt converter box and that 12 volt box is going to have uh, lighting components uh, the horn the, uh, the ancillaries for uh, like the dash needs a 12 volt out so I'm gonna use the 12 volt out on that um, and then that basically wraps up what I've done so far um, the bike build is coming along well I figure once I can get the 12 volt shit figured out because the 12 volt stuff is the biggest pain in the ass about this whole build once I can get that all figured out um, I could probably have this bike done in a week but because I'm gonna be going to see family during Thanksgiving I figure I'll be back after Thanksgiving and work on it some more I figured this might be a good Christmas present to myself then. If I can finish it up by December, I can take it out on the road and test it. Um, and in December, usually the weather around here is pretty nice, so you can test it essentially year-round. Um, like I said, though, no rain riding, but I, I'm, I'm not that proficient at motorcycling anyway, so I don't plan on riding in the rain anytime soon. Uh, but yeah. That is the current status of the Zero build. I will update you guys further as I get more parts installed and uh, more things up and running. Thanks.